Of course, if you want to be the first to know any of this information and you want to know all of the information, bluewhiteillustrated.com, two months for $1. You missed the deal to sign up that we gave you half off a full year, like an awesome, awesome deal. So here's our standard we love you because you listen to the podcast or watch the YouTube video deal. Code PSU1, two months for $1, gets you all of that juicy recruiting information. And we're creeping closer and closer to signing day, early signing day, being a part of that two months. It is peak Intel season at that point. But of course, there's always Intel that uh, Fitz is sourcing. So Fitz, what do we got going on from Penn State's uh, first primetime game in Happy Valley this year and the reaction to it from the recruits? Well, it was, it was always a plus when you can add some surprises to the list. And uh, Penn State did that uh, with a couple of guys on Saturday night. Uh, I think headlining that that list would be Joey O'Brien, uh, the safety from down around Philly at LaSalle. A uh, really good athlete. He's one of those big safety. I mean, he's pushing 6'4". He's, he's up there, and he's a really good athlete. I think he's a... If he's not a top 100 prospect on on three, I know he's close because Charles Power has texted me about him multiple times after we left him out of the original um, on 300. So um, that was it, it was a it was a it was a funny back and forth because uh, yeah I think he's going to go up here soon. He's at he, 202 uh, nationally yeah. right now, but um, he's a jumbo athlete, really good uh, range, uh, catches the ball really well. He's really impressive in seven on seven this summer. And uh, yeah, we left him out of the first lineup. I'm like, dude, there's oh, 10 guys from Pennsylvania in there and he's better than at least six of them. So yeah, that, yeah. Uh, I think that'll be correct. And he'll be a, a four star on three eventually. So uh, he's a four star in the industry ranking, but he's uh, he, he's one worth paying attention to. I think everybody's looked at Notre Dame and I know there was a pick early in the process and he went out there a bunch, but I think Penn State has really closed that gap. And you see, if you're watching on YouTube, the RPM has Notre Dame at 91%, Penn State second with 5.2%. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that that gap's a little bit tighter than uh, just a little bit, huh? 85 percentage points. Um, yeah. RPM still a work in progress there. Um, but Joey O'Brien, I think one of those headliners, another headliner this weekend, uh, Emmanuel Iannaccio. Um, You guys know that name is a five star prospect in the class of 2026. Big offensive tackle uh, from Georgetown prep in uh, in the DMV. And he's got a profile like he's got a recruiting profile where he's going to go everywhere. He's been to Ohio State. He's been to Oregon. He's been down south. He's been everywhere. But he keeps coming back to Penn State. I think Penn State's in a decent spot for him. Pretty, pretty darn decent spot for him, I'd say. Um, he, he enjoyed the atmosphere. He's, he, he's, you know, gotten back with a few answers here and there, but he's enjoyed the atmosphere. And I think he's, I think Penn State legitimately in it. This is a kid with the um, Olu Fashionu blueprint here. You've got a big guy who is, I don't want to say ready made, but he's freaking massive, close to six he's seven, close to three hundred crazy pounds. Big. Olu was never that big, um, giant hands, you know, all those, all those things. Olu was never that big, um, but he's a guy with a, with a body type that could probably, you could put in there early. Um, still some development to go as a player. I know he's the number three prospect in the country, according to the on three industry rankings, but you know, still some development to go um, uh, down there in the high school level. So, but everybody's going to want him. Everybody's going to love him. He's going to be a, a recruitment that uh, everybody's going to come calling, but Penn state was early. Penn state got him on campus. And I think there's, I think there's a lot of things, parallel with Olu, not just with the football stuff, but with the academic stuff, with the family aspect of things. You look at players that are in this situation, um, you know, their parents value education more than anything. So this is going to be an educational recruitment as well. Um, you know, it's it's it's, it's going to be, I think, one for the long haul, but I think Penn State's done a really good job so far. And he saw a really, really good offensive line performance the other night. And it, it's been an interesting one. I'm not sure how, how deep I'm going to get into this, but this offseason, he looked into other schools other than Georgetown Prep. Georgetown Prep, of course, you know, is is a wonderful school. I mean, academically awesome school. But you look at the football, it's not quite on par with the good councils, the DeMathas, Gonzaga's down there. And then, you know, he looked into some other places, looked into uh, St. Francis. But he wanted to get better as a football prospect. His parents wanted him to have the academic. He wanted to get better at the football. Stop me if you've heard that one before. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I think it's a it's a really interesting situation where you're going to have to have that combination to uh, to land this one. So I think Penn State offers that. I think that uh, Phil Troutwine's done a really good job. I think the recruiting staff's done a really good job just getting him back to campus and, uh, you know, sort of keeping his eyes toward Happy Valley instead of all the glitz and glamour. I mean, he could have gone to Alabama this weekend, could have gone a lot of places, and he ended up at Penn State for the Penn State-Illinois game. So I think that that's a good sign. Far too early to call a leader, far too early to call it, um, you know, uh, uh, one of those ones that's going to be till the end, but uh, I like, I like where Penn state's at right now. And uh, they just got to continue to be in that direction. 
um, in terms of prospects that made a long trip. Madden Williams was back uh, from uh, from California. We talked about it. Ryan talked about him on the show on Thursday. A uh, really good prospect from one of the best uh, programs in California and in the country. Um, he was back. Um, so to get him back on campus, I think is good. He's uh, he's got offers from everywhere. He's been a lot of places, but at the same time, you know, he's to get to Pennsylvania from California for a weekend. There's there's some legitimate interest there. By the way, Troy Hewn, Penn State's quarterback commit from California, was back on campus this weekend. So really, really good list of uh, of visitors. A couple of surprises were were sprinkled in there, and uh, you know, for a night game, that's what you want. Uh, one quick question going back to Joey O'Brien. Watched him against uh, Harrisburg earlier this year, and I know it was the first game of the season. Harrisburg was working through some things when it comes to their offense, but just from a way they played on the field that day, Joey O'Brien looked like maybe one of the best players on that field that included most of, I would say, the top 10 in Pennsylvania. But I'm a little surprised, uh, Fitz, today, learning he's a safety prospect. I understand he's 6'4", he's huge, but I also thought he looked really good as a receiver. So I guess I was just curious of what you know about that particular uh, situation. Is everyone recruiting him as a safety, or is it that what Penn State sees him of him with Dex and, and loving those big, rangy safeties at 6'4", and having all that growth potential? I think it's probably one of those recruitments where – the big schools are going to recruit him as a safety because they that's what they see him as. Like that's what they think that his highest level is. But when you get uh, either further away from home or lower in the pecking order, then you give that athlete opportunity. You get the receiver chance. So I think that, you know, just from looking at the schools that are offering him, Penn State and Notre Dame, I think are the top two right now. And I think both of those look at him as a big safety. Of course, Notre Dame's going to sell the Kyle Hamilton. He's going to be the next Kyle Hamilton after Jadon Blair was the next Kyle Hamilton in the class of 2025. So they're going to continue going after that, which absolutely they should. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, no, I think it's you look at the the top schools, see him as a, as a safety. But when you get further from home or when you get lower in the pecking order, when you need more to throw into the pot to to, to sweeten the deal, athlete receiver because you know let's be honest everybody wants to catch the ball everybody wants oh, the yeah. ball in their hands so yeah um but yeah I, I agree with you i mean you look at that tape from the harrisburg game i mean he was going up and getting it he was doing some great things uh for, in terms of ball skills which i think is is a positive for him as a safety as well but uh yeah. Yeah, i think that's where that's where they stand but hey i think he's good enough where if he turns around to penn state and says hey i might want the opportunity to play receiver you at least entertain the idea you know it's not it's not something you, nope your safety sorry got to go with this one so uh so i think that that's that's where you go with joey o'brien just a really mm -hmm. good all-around prospect and and to see a guy move that well and have those kind of ball skills oh, at six yeah. four like he's a lot of those guys those six four guys are, are projects because they got to learn to move they got to learn to run yeah. i think he's well, he plays corner cool. right now so he's yeah. got all of those skills to bake into that too which is why he said i get it i get why he's a safety it's just such a he's such a good football player you can see him adapt to a lot of different positions and situations yeah yeah so and 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 the other thing here he's a 2026 prospect so who knows if he wants yeah. to play receiver and, and he sets his mind to it then i'm sure he could do it i think he's that talented last uh thing we got here in fitz's recruiting update is a new offer went out this is a pennsylvania kid for 2026 so tell us a little bit more about the latest offer Reston Lehman, uh, defensive lineman uh, from Peters Township out in western pennsylvania they're having a good year and Lehman's a, a good part of it you look at the uh, you look at his tape, he's he's playing outside linebacker, he's playing defensive line. I'm still curious where his best position is. I don't know that he's uh, uh it's kind of like Bradley, like we could talk about Bradley Gompers, the Duke commit. Um, just a really good player, probably gonna grow out of linebacker, but does he have the length at defensive end? Is he a potential defensive tackle? And I know it's tough Ooh. to look at a guy right now who's a sophomore who or excuse me, who's a junior who is uh, probably 220 pounds and say defensive tackle. But, you know, there's some there's some data points along the way that could say maybe this guy's an interior uh, a rusher at some point. So I'm very curious to see which direction that goes. Um, they're, like I said, they're having a really good season. He's having a really productive season. It's kind of this is kind of the time last year when they offered Alex Tash. So like that's kind of the timeline that we're at. Like Tash was the same situation. It wasn't a guy that had a ton of offers. And then Penn State saw some some film early in his junior year, like what they saw. And, and that's a. Uh, you know, that's that that's the way that you find steals. You know, I'm not saying that this kid's going to be a steal, but that's the way that you go out about go about and find them. So uh, very interested to continue to watch his progress. Um, Pennsylvania kids followed Penn State. I uh, just, just got a pit offer as well. So I think that's going to be about one that works from from the inside out with uh, with the interest that comes in the next couple of months. 
So we'll have more recruiting conversation on Thursday, which you can check out on uh, the Blue White Illustrated YouTube channel and wherever you get podcasts where we'll get into the next recruiting list and some more of the things that happened over the last week or so. Ryan Snyder will join us. Uh, but of course, if you want to get that information right now, like I said, when we started this, subscribe right now. Here's the promo code, code PSU1, two months for $1. Gets you all the recruiting intel and message board content where you get the deep dive on some of that information. 